when we start working with a new client, um, often the first conversations we have are educational in nature in terms of letting them know what's possible from a, a simulation standpoint um, in, in, you know, in the technology today. Because as I mentioned before, this, um, this technology has changed vast, vastly in the last five years, uh, you know, in the last 20 years for sure. Um, you know, it's un probably unrecognizable to, to, to most people in the industry. Um, so the first part of that is to really train them and teach them, you know, where things are today and what's, what's even possible. The next part of that is to take what's possible and to put that up against what their goals are as a company in terms of, of what questions they need answered, um, what, what are their timelines for a lot of these things and trying to get um, a, kind of a, a roadmap of how we can leverage simulation at multiple points during their, their development process to really give them the, the most bang for their buck in terms of either cost savings or, or time uh, in development, uh, you know, cutting, cutting some of that time out. Um, those, once we have that roadmap, we can start to prioritize the things that should be done first, whether there's any pre-work that needs to be done in terms of answering questions around the specific uh, tissues that they work in, the specific disease states that they work in, um, you know, and what, what information is already available that they have as a company, what maybe is available through the academic literature or things that we would have to go out and investigate ourselves um, up front in order to kind of get started on, on, on different aspects of this. Uh, the nice thing is that for most companies, there are um, lower fidelity models where we're not necessarily including all of the details of everything that's going on um, that can provide a great amount of, of feedback on the performance of a device where they can start to make um, very important design decisions early in the process um, and save them a, a ton of time and money um, through that evaluation, but it's not something that takes a large investment of, of developing the complete model all the way through to the end. So then you can build on that model as you go through that roadmap and eventually you get to the end and you've got a um, a model that you've built on all the way through, you validated it against many different aspects of, of the testing. And that's something that can then be taken to the regulatory bodies and said, you know, here, here's part of how we develop this device and, and how we gain the insight into how it works and, um, and, and take that to them as part of that safe and effective evaluation.